Next question is from Nikki the Vizla. How did you guys get connected to start Mind Pump? Yeah, you know, Do you remember I, what, what Sal oh, used wow, to have say? We not talked about the story in a long time. Do you remember time, what man? Sal used to say all the time, every single time? Swipe right. Yeah, oh, the tender. Oh, the tender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed that. Remember, joke. That was like, that was yeah, it was like too. for, I remember, I think Doug finally said something like, okay, I, I, think, I think you should yeah. tell that story different because you share that I every know. time. That's but, not what happened. But I want to bring it back, though, because you hadn't said it in such a long time. We didn't see each other on Grinder or whatever. No, it's, and I picked this question because we we haven't talked about it in a long time. We have a large, new audience especially on youtube that kind of they ask this question quite a bit yeah uh in the comments um you know it's it's it, it kind of goes way back but it really started because um you know back in the day i you know i managed gyms i worked in, for a very large fitness company uh probably considered a high performer and you would always hear about other high performers in the company it was a large company this was 24 fitness and in those days i think the company had like three or four hundred locations and you knew about the other high performers uh, by name, the people that you would, you know, that would be mentioned. And I would occasionally hear um, Adam's name being brought up. He was a fitness manager and he was one of the top ones in the company. You were also in the same, not district, but the same region. Mm -hmm. And so I'd hear your name pop up here, but that was about it. Um, I, nothing else. But then as the years went on, it was very strange. I, I would have people come up to me who knew Adam and they would, and I remember the first time this happened, actually happened with a trainer that worked for me. Her name was Amber. You, you know who she is. And she comes up to me and she goes, have you ever met Adam Schaefer? I'm like, no, I think I know who he is. I think I've heard of him. Oh, you guys need to work together. You guys should meet you guys. Oh my God, you guys will work great together. It was a weird thing to say uh, because uh, you know, I never knew him, but I said, okay, well anyway, this happened maybe five more times with five other people it happened with Jason it happened with Larry and a, and a couple other random people. So his name stuck in my head because of that. It's a very strange thing to hear from anybody. Oh, you got to meet this person. You guys should work together. Very strange, right? So anyway, fast forward years later, I had my private personal training kind of health and wellness studio. And at the time I was really doing lots of research into the medicinal effects of uh, marijuana. I had a family member um, that had cancer and I was trying to help them and help alleviate some of the issues with the chemotherapy and that kind of stuff. And on Facebook, I saw that Adam was on there. And this is when Adam, you had uh, the cannabis clubs. Mm. And so I, I'm like, oh, let me ask him some questions. I was doing mm. lots of research. So I messaged him through Messenger on Facebook. I don't even know if it was Messenger back then, but I messaged him. And then him and I talked about marijuana, strains and cannabinoids and stuff like that. And you know, and I thought that was kind of cool. Like, oh, we have kind of similar background, but you know. that was rare back then too. By yeah. the way, that's I think that's a point. You Nobody in admit. fitness. Yeah, that was you were the first person that I met that I respected in the fitness space that I thought was very intelligent, and then also was kind of pro cannabis. It was kind of taboo in our space. Yeah, so we and that was it, right? That's kind of ended there. And then um, I met Doug, and and Doug actually came into my gym and hired me um, as his trainer. And, uh, you know, long story short, he had back problems, was referred to me by a chiropractor and I trained him and I trained Doug. Doug was not inexperienced. Doug was actually very experienced, very knowledgeable, probably one of the most knowledgeable clients I'd ever worked with in fitness because it had been a passion of his for since he was a kid. But I'd flipped a lot of what he had known on its head. And he came to me and I said, I'm only going to train you twice a week. That's all we're going to do. Let's start with that. And I remember your reaction was like, just twice a week? Like, oh, I need to do more to build muscle? I said, no, no, let's start with that. We're going to do full body. We're going to focus on these basic exercises. We're not going to train to failure. All the stuff we talk about on the podcast. And as I was training Doug, his body was just... And Doug literally thought he was a hard gainer. He's like, I'm a hard gainer. I don't build muscle. Well, if you know Doug now, you know he's not a hard gainer. You know he's got... He's a really strong guy. And he responded very well. And he came to me... Uh, probably six months or a year into this. And he, he came to me once and he goes, you know what, Sal? He goes, if you ever have something that you want to try to sell online, let me know because I could put it together for you. I think it would work really well. I like the way you present things and you communicate fitness. And that stuck with me. And I thought, God, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to write a book. But I went home and thought about it. And one day I was up late and I'm reading these studies and I, this is when I created maps anabolic and I bring it to Doug and I said, this is the program I think I want to sell, uh, but I want to test it on people. I'm going to test some of these theories on you, on other clients. I'm going to send it to other trainers. Doug took it, took it and created this online platform. And he talked me into 
doing, you know, instructional videos, which I had no intention of ever doing. I never had been in front of a camera doing that stuff. So I did it and we did this huge sales video and this, all this stuff. And we had all this stuff together. And I said, I want more opinions on what we're doing. And then I remembered Adam. I said, you know what, Adam, people have been telling me to work with him forever. He's obviously a high performer, smart guy. Um, he's in fitness. Uh, and he definitely came across as very blunt and honest back then, which was a very accurate, you know, just uh, <laughs> assessment. That hasn't changed. Yeah, I know. And so I figured if it sucked, he would tell me. And I appreciate that. So I sent it to him. And then Adam called me on the phone and then uh, invited me to his house. And then we all sat down and met. And literally, that's how Mind Pump started. We all sat down and met. And from the gates, literally, as soon as we sat down, it was nonstop conversation about the fitness industry, the, the misdirection of it, all the crap that's in it, how we communicate uh, fitness and health, you know, why we would want to do podcasting because there were low barriers to enter and nobody would tell us what to do. We didn't have to sell a product just to you know, mention what we wanted to. We could say whatever we wanted. And so literally that's how we started. And then I remember telling him, you know, Doug, my partner, he's got recording equipment because this was a hobby of Doug's. I think we could do this. And we literally started it, I think, like the next week. And yeah, I, think we it the first. I think it was the next weekend that Doug said, hey, I've got the stuff. We could just try it and see what happens. And so. we started it in your house. Literally mm -hmm. recorded it. And I think it was at the kitchen table or, or the counter. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. Doug put up the camera. And that was the first Mind Pump episode. And that was it. Well, you know, uh, one memory that comes to mind was when we launched the podcast. We, I think we dropped. How many episodes did we drop at first? Was it five or? At least three. Was it three, something like that? Yeah. We dropped the episodes. I'm training my clients. Remember, all of us had our day jobs or whatever. And I'll never forget, I had my phone in my pocket, and it's just buzzing like crazy. And I look at my phone, and it's Adam. And I put him to voicemail, put it back in my pocket. It starts buzzing again. Pull it out. It's Adam again. Voicemail. This happened like three or four times. I'm with a client. I'm like, shit, man. So I tell my client, hold on one second. I got to get this call. It's obviously important. I go outside, and Adam's like, bro, go to iTunes right now. I'm like, okay. And he goes, check new and notable. So I go to the section and we were right there listed as a new and notable. And I was like, oh shit, I think we have something. Yeah. So yeah. it's really, really good time with, uh, but you know, with one the more cool thing to add, I think that it's, that it's unique to the, the, the four way partnership is that, um, you know, Justin, uh, I think, God, I don't remember what year it was, Justin, maybe Oh six. When did you, when did you graduate from college? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, so uh, Justin, um, I, I got him fresh out of college with his Kinesis to come work for me as a trainer. And um, we just, we we connected so well because we were actually really different. Like uh, he had a lot of success as a trainer um, for the opposite reasons that I did. I would say that the areas that I was weaker in as a trainer, I found those were his strengths. And so we made just a, a really good team together and he quickly became my right hand man and assistant at, at the clubs. I transferred to another club and took him with me um, and we went on to do some really great things uh, in those places. And then we went our separate ways. Uh, he he left the company, went on to do his own thing privately and uh, I went on to marijuana to do my own thing but always remained in contact, just checking up on each other. And he was always like wanting to do something with me. He's like, come on, we should do this. And I'm like, ah, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm digging like, this I'll pull him back into fitness, <laughs> yeah. dude. I, I knew I would at some point. Yeah, he was always coming down and, and pitching me on the, the a new idea that he wanted to do. And and I'd say, yeah, I like that. Just oh, the closer. And, yeah, he would always be <laughs> showing up and telling me this stuff. Well, and, we used to crush. I mean, uh, the, the, the environment was nothing like I'd ever been in, mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, having a job. It was like just constant fun. But I mean, we put numbers out there that like the company hadn't seen. And mm -hmm. it was just like the culture that was created and, and just working with Adam was always like really super fun. And it was like, but we got after it, you know, and, and it was, it was, it, it was remnant of when I was on a, a, a really, you know, a championship team. It was very similar to that. It had that same dynamic, and so I guess that I think I, I just always wanted to, you know, bring that back and figure out a way that we could like, uh, you know, resurface that somehow. Yeah. So I was just like, Adam, what are you doing? You know, we're we gonna get back to this or what? You know. And ironically, we eventually did, right? But what, uh, you know, what ended up happening was, uh, I about two two and a half years or so, somewhere around there, give or take. Um, I got, I got tired of, of marijuana and I've shared this story before where, um, I had reached this, this financial goal that I always had. And I was actually really unhappy. I just, 
Um, I had deep pockets, but I had uh, relationships falling apart. The girl I was dating had just cheated on me, which had never happened to me before. Uh, my life, my my relationship with my family was in disarray. I was in the worst shape of my life. So I was really like uh, unhappy. I didn't like, I no longer liked what I was doing and I missed fitness. And at that same time, Justin had this like fitness app idea and I had been kind of toying around with something similar that I wanted to do. And so, if, you know, he would always be hitting me with these ideas. I was like, you know what, let's go have coffee. I want to talk about some things. And, and so when we first met up, I was like, I was in a position at that time to be able to kind of financially support our idea. And I was like, all right, you kind of run this. I'll be the, the finance, the finances behind this and let's see what we could do. So we started with the intention of building an app and then my goal was Justin was going to build all the technical stuff. And then I was to go get the audience. And so I instantly turned on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram uh, like the next day. Up until that mm -hmm. point, I didn't have any of those. And the sole intention of starting all those platforms up were to gain an audience, to build an audience mm -hmm. of people. So we had people to potentially sell, sell this to. app to. Yep. And that was really, and we were in the thick of that when you guys had already built maps and when we all oh, got yeah. together. So it just seemed like great synergy. And you know, the crazy part about this, we all went into business with each other without even laying out like who was going to get what money. Like if Sal and Doug sold this program through maps, would it be our money too or your money? Or yeah. if we sold this app, would it be our money? Or like There was we, a lot of respect. Uh, I think, yeah. The, it's, and it's, the irony is like what we were actually doing back then, we still do on, on a lot of levels like too. And like, it, so there's a whole page devoted to like, you know, exercises and like descriptions and like we were creating all that kind of stuff that you see in our maps programs. Now, you know, Sal had come up with the concepts that were very unique uh, that people haven't, uh, you know, focused on the, the, the real main things that get you success. And so it was like, oh yeah, you figured that part out. And it's like, it just became this, you know, total synergistic uh, uh, contribution. Yeah. I, I I liked Justin obviously right away. He's very likable, but I know I had to win him over. I think early on, <laughs> early on, he's like, "Who's this flashy?" I'm a tough. I'm a tough fast one, talker. dude. You yeah. know, like yeah. especially if yeah, you got you like verbal skills like you do. Yeah, yeah. no, but I, that's I actually liked you more for that um, yeah. because uh, I know that you that's that's who you are. You don't you're you're gonna be who you are, and if somebody has to win you over. Which was uh, yeah, yeah, it was a, like it that. was a really interesting dynamic to see four you know serial entrepreneurs, all leaders in their own right, um, come together and with no real real organization or business plan be able to come together on something and then it just I mean that's why I mean, I'm the one who I, or we all do believe this way right I just believe some things were meant to be and you know there uh, I think we broke all the rules as far as how you start a business yep, I don't totally. think we, we did yeah. anything the way yeah. you were supposed and there to was, there was one moment um, at least for me specifically I've said this before um, I haven't said it in a while but for me that was really pivotal and it was when we had another partner when we first started mind pump that we were going to do this with. And we recorded, I don't know, 12 episodes, filmed them, edited them. Remember we were new at this. So this was like a big deal. It was hard work. We had a, you know, this nice backlog or, or bank, I should say of, of episodes ready to launch. And our, this partner of ours who had the largest social media following, by the way, Adam had a small following at the time. I think he had like 20,000 followers. Not even. I think it was only like 10 back then. Yeah. And this other person had something like, I don't remember what it was, a hundred or 70 or something like that. So we were relying on, on this person's social media following and he comes out and he was sponsored by a supplement company. And I think he sent some of the episodes to the supplement company. And because we were so honest and raw and whatever, they said, mm, I don't think it's a good idea Super raw. That, that you work with these guys. And so he, he, he literally, he, he dropped out, he dropped out through text. Hey guys, can't do this. We had to scrap 12 episodes, and I, I remember, I just literally remember the day. I had my phone in my hand, fully prepared to get on the phone and motivate Adam, Justin, and Doug to continue with Mind Pump, because I thought for sure they'd want to stop, and I'm like, no, I got to get them motivated, and I get on the phone, and before I could say anything, it was either Adam or Justin that was like, fuck it, we're going we're gonna to make new episodes and do it ourselves. And I remember hearing, before I could even get a word out, and it gives me the chills because I was like, oh shit, this is, this is going to be good. These guys, these guys are the guys that I think uh, I want to work with and this is going to be pretty awesome. And there's been more stuff that's happened since then that yeah, but to that continues point, to reinforce it. That is probably... That's the root of it all, though. Yeah, because when you think of, when I explain this to people, like there was no doubt that 
none of us, uh, none of us thought we were good at this. Like nobody was like, <laughs> no. nobody was like, oh, I'm so good. Like we're going to be great. And it was like the thing that we all had in common and that we had built in all of our previous years of experience in building other businesses was that um, we're probably going to suck. We're probably going to fail a lot. Um, and you know what? Like, let's just, let's just outwork everybody. Let's do it a lot. Let's yeah. do it a lot let's and let's get back up and just, and so when back then it was advised, you do like one episode a week and start slow. And we came out the gates, just let's see how much we can put out there because we knew that the reps were, were this is where we were going to get better. Like we knew we were terrible and we, but we would, we could get better if we just poured everything into this and just kept going and kept going. And it, really that's a testament to how this thing was built was by no means do I think that any of us were talented in this arena at all, but and, but we knew that. We, we were very well aware of that going yeah, into it. Yeah, we were it. all willing to just be sucky for a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the key right there. And we less suck now. Yeah. 